Hi guys and welcome to Hack Explorer. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the Log4J vulnerability, or also known as the Log4Shell. So to explore this vulnerability, I have used the Try Hack Me platform, and they have an exercise called the Sola exploiting Log4J. Sola is an Apache application which is actually using the Log4J utility. So this exercise, which is made by Try Hack Me and John Hammond, is really helpful to understand how this vulnerability works. And additionally, it shows you how to detect and mitigate this error also. So not only the hacking part. So we'll go through step by step on all the 10 steps that we have on this web page. And I'll try to add more information as I go. So first of all, let's not waste time and let's go to the introduction. Basically, you just have to have a free Try Hack Me account and you just search for this page and you will be ending up here. Once you go there, you just have to go through these tasks and you can complete them as they given. So it's a very easy platform to use and it's a very easy form for a beginner. So let's start this one. It says about on December 9th, the world was made up of vulnerability identified as CVE 2021-44228. This is a number that we won't be forgetting for a long time because this is a vulnerability that is so critical because vulnerability was detected in a Java logging package, Log4j. So basically Log4j is used by Java developers to log the application activity. It's not only open source applications, many of the enterprise grade applications are using this utility to make logging for their application so they can discover debug later at a time. This vulnerability has the highest score of vulnerability which is the CVS score of 10, the most critical designation. The other problem is it's very easy to exploit as we'll see in the demo. So if you can see in Log4j there is a thing called the JNDI also known as the Java naming and directory interface. This is the thing that has the vulnerability. So if I show you this Java logging package as it's uh, like logging the code the developer could enrich extra information. So what extra information you can see make LDAP queries, DNS queries, so like that. So this is an enriching thing. The problem here is this particular functionality is not sanitized properly, meaning it instead of just processing the log and enriching it, if it finds any command, it is executing. So this is the problem in a very high level that we see over here. So once you understand what's the background is this, just click on completed and I'll be leaving this section to you to read and understand. You can, if you want more information, as I told you, so this is a page that shows how many applications are affected this moment. You can see the list just goes and on. Uh, this is a very small list. So for example, if I go to this, these are all the advisories in alphabetical order that shows each advisory for, from each application that they have patched or fix the vulnerability and go to the latest version. So if you want to check if your application is affected, I'll put the link over here and just Google your application if it is vulnerable for Log4j, but you can see it's a huge risk. So now you can see the gravity of how many applications are affected from this vulnerability. So when you're starting this, click on Start Machine over here. And meanwhile, when you're starting, you can also use this Attack Box feature. Attack Box is a free box given by TryHackMe. Uh, it'll open the Kali Linux box in the web browser, but I'm not using this. I'm using the VPN method. So you can actually click on Access Machines and download this VPN configuration file. If I click here, it'll actually generate. You can save it over here. You need to have OpenVPN installed. If you don't have OpenVPN, just run this command and it'll install. And once you have that file, you just have to run this file over here. I have already downloaded my file. I'm going to log in into my Kali. So it should be over here. So just give sudo open VPN and the access that you have over here. So you have to give the administrative password of your Kali box and it will connect. After connecting, just check you'll get the IP address of the vulnerable machine. Check if you can access this one. So I'll go into another terminal window. I'll just ping if it's a new IP. Okay, so I can access the machine. So this is how you can confirm your access, right? So after uh, starting the machine, you can minimize this. Make sure you give the correct answers. I mean, just click on the answers. And first of all, they show the reconnaissance. So here, the first thing that you can get is you are checking what are the services that is running on this particular server. So the popular tool to check the services is Nmap. You can run this command, just copy and paste, because once you start the machine, you can get it over here, right? So this is the simple version of Nmap. 
So it'll scan the particular machine so it can see one port. Another thing that I saw here is this machine runs a version of Solar which takes some time to load. Just give it about four minutes like this and it'll load for you and it detected another port. So the exercise says uh, if you go down you can run this command also. You can see here when you give the inmap command like this it will run on all the ports which means 65,000 ports and all the services. So I'm not going to take some time it's asking what service is running on port 8983. So let's check the easy way if it if you have time just run this and skip it will come but since I have limited time I'm going to run in map you can run a service version scan and a verbose output just as I typed here I just have to type the IP which dot one two three one two three. So this will run the service scan and show me quickly what application service that I'm running on this machine. Yep. And you can see 8983 is open and you are running. So if you are a pen tester and if you don't know which ports is running, you have to run the full scan and you have to get this Apache version. I'll copy this and we'll see if this is the answer that they need. So it gives the answer format also. Right. And yep. Let's check. Yes, an Apache is the hint that you can see that there's no mark reduction or anything. So that's the second one. So discovery of the application. Reconnaissance part is over. So Apache Solar, I just give the correct answer. And yes, I just give this one also. Ports accessible and the discovery. This is the interesting part. They give this HTTP address. So basically we found a port. What we'll do next is we'll try to access the port and see what services is running on that machine. So same IP and port number 8983. Okay, so this is the application you should be expecting. The solar application is vulnerable to the vulnerability that we are searching for. So take a look at the first page. While navigating, you should be able to see clear indicator log for use within a login activity. Okay, so in the first page itself, we should find, okay, there is some arguments. Express uh, your search functionality, log for J. Yep, so this is the indication that we are having some version of log4j that is used in this environment, right? So the answer that you should supply over here is what is the D solar log argument set to? Okay, so they're asking the exact D solar log. So this is the log dir. Remember, this is all the logs log4j stores here. Let's check if it is correct. Correct. Uh, one file has significant number of. Okay, so. At the beginning of this, you are able to download the sample logs of this. So I have already downloaded this file. These are the logs that I have over here, solar logs. What they're asking is one file has significant number of info entries. So let's open this log. You can do a small open terminal here. I have installed Codium and you just have to give a dot which will open all the files as a folder. So all the files within that log files are open multiply. So I'll go to the main log, solar.log. We are looking for one file that has significant info entry. So this should be the significant number of entry. Okay. It's this, yes, a lot of info log entries are there. Okay, so this admin, web app is null and path is admin course. Okay, this is the application path and you have to give the parameters. So what, what does it say? Just the file name itself no party needed okay so what file name it is asking for it's this this is the file name solr.log so we'll type that one solr.log what path or url endpoint is indicated in these repeated entries yes it's always admin this is the path that is mentioned every time so okay so i'll copy that and we'll go here I'll just add a slash over here because it's asking in that format. Great. Viewing the log entries, what field name indicates some data entry point that you use a good controls? The main idea here is we have a path and we have a parameter in front of this one. So, and you can see in this, so according to the logs, this could be an entry path. I believe it's the param variable they are talking about. So let's copy that. Right. Size we have finished these things. So this section is the most interesting part, the proof of concept section. So what we are going to do is we are going to access this URL. So it's the same URL that we tried earlier, but in a different way. So I'll just, just open another page. 
go inside and just type over here and you can see the JSON output of these parameters. What we can see here is, if I open a question mark, param equals something like, okay, uh, I saw a parameter earlier, let me check. Yeah, ID equals 1337 equals, okay, inside here. This is how oh, 1337, I'm not sure whether it will return anything. So you can pass any parameters over here. So I don't get any information right now, but this is how the parameters are sent. So according to this research, this is the vulnerable parameter that we have over here, which is included in the log file. And also this is the syntax and how you pass these variables. According to the log4j vulnerability, we have to use the Java naming directory interface lookup function. So this is the lookup look function that is vulnerable, which doesn't have proper sanitization and it could execute command. So in JNDI, we are using another thing called LDAP. JNDI will make an LDAP query to make get some extra information resources from LDAP server. This is where the attacker has his own LDAP server set up and where we used to send our malicious code into this site that invokes the RCE. So this is a user input. Not only these inputs are vulnerable. For example, if you read further, so the log4j can actually process the use agents, uh, x forwarded. Uh, if I show you another example, these are all the inputs that you can see the HTTP referrer, use agent, XCIP or a cookie. Any of these variables can be used to inject the vulnerability inside the site. First of all, you need to do your recon and find out which one of these values are vulnerable. So here in this lesson, they are only showing you like one particular way of finding this one, but this method can be used for anything. So let's check how these work. What happens in this section is we have a listener set up in port 9999 and we are just checking whether our application is doing this lookup and it can connect back to us. If this is successful only, we can continue further. First of all, what we'll do is we'll just type ifconfig. So this is my IP address. So I'll just split the control vertically and asking to open a netcat listener. So this will actually listen to our connections. I'll copy this. If I open this, it's listening to port now. We are going to run this curl command now. Copy it, paste it over here. I can split it horizontally and just, okay. I have to change this, your attack IP address into the IP address of my machine that is 10 dot. This is the IP address that is given by the VPN connection that you made to try hack me. So you had to go for an IP address that is starting in the 10 range. Okay, 3 dot 217. Okay, what this command will do is it will make a call for the vulnerable application and it has a temporary variable called foo. You can name it anything you want. Enlarge it. Now you can see cos equals foo and dollar. And this is how you pass the JNDI lookup. So you run this, just keep your eye on here. And we got a connection back from our thing. So this means we got a result from LDAP connection and it shows that our server is able to make the LDAP query and make a reverse connection back to our server. So there are other ways to check this. If you go to the vulnerability things, you can also do this with Canary tokens without setting up a local listener. You can go here and you can select a token called log for shell and just give an email test at test.com or something. This should be your email address and that, that you're testing for. It should not be the same name. Once you create a token, you can send this as a payload. What happens is if the application is vulnerable, you send the same payload, same syntax like this, and you should be getting an email. So there are multiple sites. For example, we have a Huntress log for shell vulnerability. Same as this, it will actually create a DNS entry like this. You can actually test this as the string that you're testing. If something is connecting back, you can actually get the result from here. These are some public sites. If you are checking for public vulnerabilities, for local testing, this is the recommended method where you have a listener inside and you can actually test it for here. Okay, so hope that was informational and let's move into the next one. So this is the testing part, the proof of concept. And yes, so I'll just say yes, I did all the dollar sign and yet now the important part. Okay, so at this point you have verified the target is in fact is vulnerable by seeing the connection that caught in your netcat listener. 
However, it made LDAP request, so all your Netcat listener may have seen was non-printable characters, what we saw over here, okay? In this step, we are required to create a LDAP server and a web server. It's like an attack chain. For example, our application is making LDAP query. So we should make sure uh, we have a running LDAP server. And we are going to create a small HTTP server to transfer our payload through the LDAP query. So we are using a tool called MarshallSec. There's a problem in MarshallSec. If you are using the attack box feature here, it won't work because the attack box doesn't have internet connectivity. In that case, you have to use this particular server that we created just now. So I have installed this MarshallSec utility. Let me show you how to do this. Okay, so you'll once you have uh, run these steps, you should have a folder like this called MarshallSec. Make sure you are in that and make sure you install this. Since I'm already installed this one, I won't get any error. Let's check, yeah, I have already installed and mvclean package run this one. So this will actually create things that you need. So it'll be a quick installation. Okay, so build was success. Let me check if the files are there, it's there. And to run this, just run this whole command. Yeah, so I have to give my own IP address. Split horizontally. The best thing about Terminator is actually you can drain in my IP address, so you won't get lost. Okay, so I have config. Let me run that one. So my IP address is always shown here. Is it the same IP? Yes. So, say this is the LDAP server, so it is easy to identify. This is the payload. And this is the listener. Uh, my IP address, I'll just copy it and I can just close it over here. Okay. What happens is when you are running this LDAP server, will call the exploit, which we are going to create next which is hosted in my Linux box. So I had already given my address over here. Now it's actually listening to 1389 requests. But the problem is, we have the payload. So the server will call the JNDI and it's try trying to transfer this payload for him. Now, what is the output of running this command? Okay, so it's actually listening on. So this is the output that you have to give over here. Right, now is the time to create the Java file. This is the exploit over here. I'll create nano exploit.java, which I have already created over here. So what you have to do is you have to copy this code over here and you have to make sure you have given your address in this. So I have given my local Kali box address over here. Once you're finished in nano, press control X and it'll save. You have to compile this file. This file, when you compile, you'll get the class. To compile this file, the command is this. So you use this command, java c exploit.java. So once this is uh, correct, you will get a warning, but finally you will be end up in this file. So this is the compiled Java file. This is the file that we have to send it to the attacker. Now, if you don't get the Java C package, you have to sudo apt-get. Yeah, this is the command that you have to do. If you can't compile, you have to make sure you have installed the JDK. So now we ran that command, we ran the Java C and here actually in this folder where you have this, you have to run this particular server. Python is installed by default. Okay. And it will run. So now I'll make sure we have everything in clear sight. Okay. Python HTTP server. So we have LDAP server listening for LDAP connections. So this LDAP server will actually once it get connection it will actually refer to this site so this site is currently we are hosting on here which is actually giving the exploit file as a class you can see we are mentioned okay please serve the exploit file from here which is this file right so let's see we have done this so 
again now we'll see whether we are getting our reverse connection over here okay now what happens is we have this connected okay this is also completed now we are going to run the exploit like this So I'm just going to change the IP address. Same here, that is 10.9.3.217. So it's asking for the exploit file. Now when I run this, we should first get a request over here and we should get a request over here once it's completed, we'll be getting a reverse shell. So let's hope all goes well and press enter. Okay, we got this one, we got this one, and we got a connection. Now, if I type something like a command called who am I, you can see we are running a Sola. You can say ID. This is a shell, but we don't have the full shell over here. So this is how you get the command on the reverse shell so actually we created a reverse shell now it's time to upgrade it uh, please hug any instant reporters that you know yeah yeah we should do that actually so yes and troubleshooting information yes uh, in the exploit.java you can actually make powershell requests or anything so for now we have a simple reverse shell created over here you can work more on this one okay so now we have a simple shell running as you can see like can run basic commands it will actually run the commands but it's not a full shell you can't go back or anything if i just type host name oops host name yeah it's a solar so you can do stuff but some advanced stuff we need a complete shell so let's go into the next section okay so persistence so persistence is now that you gained a reverse shell connection on the victim machine you can continue to take any action you like so at the time of end mapping, we saw port 22 was open on the host. This is an important part of reconnaissance. You have to enumerate what services are available. So here the idea is, right, I just ran the who am I connection and we are running as Sola. So that's uh, one indication what user account that we have. And let's, let's go for this host name is Sola. Now we have to get a stable shell. This is not a stable shell as I told you. There's no backspace. You can't uh, do one doors over here. One thing is you can actually run this command, okay, to get a full shell over here. Okay, so just paste this here and now you can see you get a full shell that is, so if I, if I go back, now I know which path I am, okay. Okay, so if this is like a Python script that you can like upgrade your shell and you can run these commands to make sure all the historical functions are using because I'm not concentrating on this more because it's very easy and it's explained very well. This is to all to make the Python shell more stable. Okay, next thing is check for super user permissions. Why? If you type sudo dash l. Okay, user Sola may run the following commands on Sola, any password, no password reader. So this makes sure this is like an administrative user, which should not be the case. But if you have a low privilege user running, you have to use the privilege escalation exploit at this time, which we are not going to talk about over here. But in this case, it's a high privilege user. So we ran this, found out that this user is having root user access. And next one is we can go to the user and change his password. Let's do this. So sudo bash what happens is if i type here i just made myself root and i'm going to change the password for sola why is that well let's check password sola o l r now i'm going to give something like a simple password which i can remember yep you type the next password yes now i can directly ssh into this machine so you came from a web page and this one now it will ask yes just mention here to remember the fingerprint and one q is that's it now we have permanent access for this machine anytime you want we just type the ip in and you are inside the machine so these are the things as an instant responder you have to check like do we, you have a connection from a ip what type of other protocols has he tried so if you see like okay LDAP connectivity is coming in web connectivity and suddenly turning ssh that's a bad sign you have to take more attention over here now comes the detection part so 
as mentioned unfortunately finding application vulnerable for this one is very hard but as security analyst and incident responders okay one thing that we can find out is for example this has been explained very well in the swiss emergency cert the attacks vectors that we talked about for example this is a vulnerable server and he's coming from outside they have used the user agent string to come into the site so you can see the jndi lookup will come as a web uh, protocol so here you can actually block it with a web one thing is you can actually detect the connection coming in but the problem is it's very hard to find so there are a lot of functions that you can use if you are running a server you can go here these are the log4j files that we have been used so this particular site has them hashed so if you create a script that hashes all your functions and if this matches your hash then you have an application that is vulnerable for log4j this is one way of finding this again as i mentioned earlier also if you can actually go for sysmon command execution if you are running on windows and if you are seeing any command execution that is having a log4j inside the command line which you can do easily with a sim and uh, you can find out if it is using so many people have done the class and the jar files used within log4j and they hash them so you can actually hunt them through these hashes so if the hashes are existent that means you have a vulnerable application within that environment okay another thing is you can actually go through the application logs if you are incident responder if you believe a server is been attacked the best place to check is the log files so to explore your log out use your ssh connection reverse shell into blah 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 yes we know already where the log paths are as you saw on our dashboard so the logs path was this one so wa solar logs let's go into this one so we already conduct attack let's check how the attack logs look like so what you have to do is if you are checking for log files inside this one so where am i currently okay home solar folder so i'll go to cd slash wa solar logs okay so i'll just type what are the files that are here you can see the same files are here i'm interested in this log i'll just cat it lr.log okay so this could give a lot of information let me get it into this now you can see our log entries are already there every log that we made from the jndi so from this you can see somebody has been trying to exploit it uh, another thing is you can use the grep function to add some color jndi yep now you can see all the jndi queries that are made inside this i hope the text is clear let me increase the path here you can see uh, i have tried earlier some sites for hundreds log for shell hundreds testing was done and most of the ldap queries so just like this you can check the application log the ssh log of the file so this is a log file so if you are pushing this out for a stream look for these strings whether any application have jndi if you're not using jndi and if you certainly see jndi requests like this it's a big problem so just check them maybe the attack is just trying but check any reverse connections to this ip if it is successful then you might have an incident so this is how you view the log files to get more information did we look at this one yes we looked at the cdr logs review the log file you know if it logs so hint is what you were looking for so we are looking at the correct log uh, we cat into this and note the gns syntax include log entries if you like experiment more try some bypass method in the task flow so next one is bypasses this is getting interesting since as i told you if you are a threat hunter you will be always looking for the jndi keyword so what attackers do is they use functions given in the payload and change into this for example so these are some of the special characters that are used like for example this is one of the crafts so if i come here i'll open a leaf pad okay so this is the exploit curl command that we have sent to this so what you can do is that you can copy this path over here i'll copy the same thing instead of telling j ndl dev can i copy this part up to here and you can see here we are saying use lower j and connect it with ndi and lower l and lower d connected to a and a p so this is like obfuscation so this is how they used to bypass vac 
if I show you, when you're checking for these things, first thing that they say is, if you see JNDI, block it with the WEF. But if you are bypassing it, you have to use extra text strings. It's still possible. You have to give all the possibilities, which is really impossible. Let's check if this is working. When you are looking for logs, you can cat or you can use a thing called tail. Uh, tail is actually a command that's showing the last entries of a log file, which will be easy for testing what are the latest logs. So what I'll do is uh, just try to run this. Okay, and let's check if there's another command after this. Okay. So you can see our log file actually received this query and here you can see JNDI. I have mentioned it like this, but in the log file you can actually see it is configured. So this could be used for actually bypass the WEF level, but in the log level actually you'll be seeing again uh, these kind of things, right? So this is uh, how you can use WEF bypassing. Let's look into that area more. You can use lower characters, make it upper and some other obfuscation. And you can also check the RMI protocol. If, so there are different protocols. We only looked at JNDI protocol, but there are other protocols also, which is vulnerable. Okay, so you can try, try that ones also. And if I go to this post, these are all the environment variables that you can get. You can get the username of the computer, the home directory and the VMware version lot of uh, stuff like this so you can use those functions for example i saw in some situations where they are actually using the remote host name variable yes environment name okay and connecting them into this so this is all and yes i'll complete that section for now right so again mitigation part this only shows uh, how to mitigate this in the solar file Okay, so each application you might need to go to the advisory and check what the steps that you take. Some might tell to remove some class files. Uh, some might you need to patch it for the latest version that is available. Up, as of now, you have to upgrade it to 2.16, but sometimes it might not be possible. So suggestion is you might get an instruction set like this. So here in this section, you can go to this file and can uh, locate this file inside here. You can use this locate command like this. Me because I'm inside this machine, I'll go to cd dot k locate. Sorry, in that sh. So here. So this is the path that you'll find this location. So if you want to edit that, just type sudo nano slash hc default solar dot in sh. Okay. So go to the end, the last line, and you just enter this in K okay, and paste it over here. Control X to save it. Yes. And this is the part that I have on the location. Yep. And completed. Once you do a configuration, you have to restart the service. Let's see, it'll take some time to restart these services. So yeah, as I told you, go through the vendor documentation. If you have vulnerable application, they will come up with updated version or something like this, a workaround for the solution. In this case, it is uh, stopping the logging functionality of this. So the message lookup function is just turning it off. Now we need to check if our service is running. So give it some time. It won't start immediately. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll try to do a reverse shell for this. Let's clear this window and make sure I have the exploit code running over here and just get my NC connection. Okay, so we'll try to exploit it again. Okay, so you can see in this section, if I'm running here, I should get a reference call for this one. So that chain is broken and you have successfully mitigated the vulnerability. Okay, so this is how you like mitigate it okay and this is the workaround but it's better to actually update it to the latest version i hope this was informational i know it was a long video but uh, there is a lot to learn and a big thanks goes for trihack me and john hammond for making this exercise for us and to us understand this better please like the video if you like the content and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe